Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, 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 y'all. All right, so I am coming live um, to hopefully, let me see. Hopefully it has the information here. Let me go ahead and comment and see if I can pin. Okay, let me go ahead and comment really quick. Hopefully it's there, but hello, 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 how are you? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started, you guys. I'm going to pray in and I'm going to release what God has said to me, okay, in reference to this topic Tuesday. All right, so Lord God, we thank you right now, God, just for what you're constantly doing, God. God, we say thank you one today, God, just for how you continue to move, how you continue to keep us, how you continue to minister to us, God, even in the midst of everything that's going on today, God. God, we say thank you that you woke us up this morning, God. God, we say thank you for our working limbs on today, God. God, we say thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, for another day, God, to seek you. Another day, God, where we have a heart that's open to say yes all over again. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you that it doesn't have to be a Sunday that we come and seek you, oh God. God, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that it doesn't have to be a Sunday for you to meet us in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, so we say thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, for coming and sitting with us. God, so as I begin to release what you've been saying to me, oh God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you touch my lips, that you touch my throat, that you touch my sound. God, I want everything that I'm about to say to come directly from you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, each and everything, God, that's not of you, oh God. God, I ask right now, God, that you begin to tell me to hush, and I'll hush, God. If there's something that drop in my spirit that you want me to say, God, tell me to say it, and I'll speak it. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, so go ahead and have your way, God. Go ahead and present yourself, God. Go ahead and talk as you talk, oh God. Go ahead and explain and express the way that you only know how, God. God, so we're believing that on today, in the name of Jesus, that you will have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. All right, let's get started. So, you guys know the other day I had posted a post, and it says, God will send you a viewpoint or a sign that will explain something that didn't make sense before. Now, every Tuesday, I've been posting tips where I'm just giving you guys what God is giving me. I'm just pouring it out to you and just saying however God tells me to say it. Well, on yesterday, or I think the day before yesterday, when God gave me this, I had came across something. And the something that I came across, I'm not going to pinpoint because I don't want to put anybody's name out there or anything like that. But a friend that you know came across my screen when I was on Facebook. And when it came across, I instantly said, wait, I thought I was friends with this person. All to realize that I wasn't. Right? And so when I went on there and I realized that I was not friends with this particular person, I instantly said, how come I'm not friends with them the whole time? I thought that I was friends with them. And really, I really wasn't. But I didn't know that, right? So God said, go onto their page. I hit the button and I begin to go through the page and I begin to look around and, you know, everything like that. Now, let me tell you something. First of all, let me, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this up right here on my, on my laptop so that I can pay attention to everything here as well. Okay. So I was trying to figure out how come. I'm not friends with this person. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense because I was friends with this person before. And then God said, but I'm going to show you why you aren't. And he said, go on there and look, right? So I begin to go on to the page and I begin to look around and, you know, and I'm like, oh, it hit me so quick. And instantly, 
before I could do anything or say anything, I just instantly went in and and I instantly begin to do that. And when I did that, I said, Oh, Oh God, I thank you for your protection. What I seen, I could have been a part of. Let's pause right there for a second. I look back down the line and I remember I was friends with this person. And it was something that they did that I remember hitting the, the unfriend button. Quick. Boom. Unfriend. What I seen yesterday, I never seen before. But there were signs back then that showed me that I needed to walk away back then. That made sense two days ago what am I saying I'm, let me calm down I'm, I'm getting a little excited because I'm telling you I'm just so grateful for God's protection when you sit back and you think about everything it really begins to make sense how God protects us from things that we don't even realize he's protecting us from I got a scripture for y'all Romans 8 and 26, it says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groanings. Okay, let me break it down really quick because I want you to understand what I'm saying. So, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. I didn't realize I was weak back then. I didn't realize that a lot of times back then, something that I used to always do is when I felt like I should break away from people, I always thought about how they would feel. I always thought, well, if I break away from them or if I pull away or if I stop talking to them, then they're going to say I'm funny. They're going to say I'm acting crazy. Oh, she thinks she better than us. Oh, she thinks she think she's smarter than us. She thinks she just got this all together. She thinks she all that in a bag of chips. Y'all know how it goes. And so I would hold on to something that God told me to let go of. Not realizing how much it could have affected me back then. Right? So while I'm sitting here and I'm holding on to this thing. That God has told me to let go of. I'm hurting myself. So this right here. Is my time of weakness. I'm hurting myself in my time of weakness. Because I don't know what I ought to pray for. But see it's something about Jesus. It's something about when you build a relationship with God. He begins to pray. That's the purpose of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Because, see, I might not know what to say, but I know how to pray. I might know, might not know what to say in prayer, but I know who or how to get my prayer through. And I just begin to speak to God. So where I don't know what to pray for, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the God, the God that we serve, Him, He's the one that knows what we need and how we need it. But it says wordless groanings. Meaning, I can't say I can, but it says wordless. That means without words. All of that is not words. That is a sound. That is groans. Oh God, mm, 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 mm. oh God, oh God, I thank you. That is groans. When you don't know what to say, just begin to rock and shake and depend on your Holy Ghost. Okay, but then it says, it, it says the Spirit himself intercedes. So you don't need to do anything. You don't need to do anything. So when I wouldn't let go... I wouldn't let go of people so people let go of me. Hmm. 
Somebody comment this. I wouldn't let go of people so people let go of me. You may not understand it today. When you hear a no. You may not understand it today when people feel like they don't want to be connected to you. You may not understand it today when it seems like everybody is turning against you and they no longer want to be a part of what you're doing. You may not understand that today. But can I tell you God knows? Can I tell you it has a purpose? When I said God will send a viewpoint or a sign that will explain you may not understand it today but the sign that he's going to send tomorrow the sign that he's going to send next week the sign that he's going to send some months from now is going to be your viewpoint and you will be like what in the world you're going to have a moment like i had wow god now it makes sense Sometimes we don't realize how much people will try to get us caught up in their mess because we are already connected to them. We don't realize that. We don't realize that somebody is beefing with somebody else so now they want us to beef with them too. We don't realize that somebody went through a divorce and they bitter. So now my divorce or my situation may be different from theirs. So now they want me to act like them and treat my ex or treat my baby daddy or treat my baby mama the way they treat theirs all because that's their story. Can I tell you that's somebody else's story that don't have nothing to do with you? Because you don't know what you ought to pray for. They don't know what they ought to pray for. They don't realize that God has something that's attached to them. That don't make sense right now. But give it some time baby. And it's going to make so much more sense. So much more sense. We got to get to a place Will we stop feeling so woe is me when people break off? I'm sorry if I'm saying this in a, in a format where it seems a little, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to say cocky because it's not cocky, but I'm saying it as if I'm not showing you any sympathy or I don't have any remorse towards what you are going through or what you've been through. But what I'm saying is, is let it go. It don't make sense today, but God is pulling them people out of your life for some reason because you wouldn't let them go, so they had to let you go. God knows and sees beyond what you ever could see. He's an all-knowing God. He knows everything. He knows the number of hairs that's on your head. He knows everything. Everything about you. He knew your name before you was born. So what makes you think he should not know who you should be around and who you should be connected to? Sometimes we don't realize that being connected to somebody can unlock some things. But being connected to somebody can also hold some things from being unlocked. And I can just hear God say so clearly today, do you want some things to be unlocked or do you want some things to be held back because you won't let go? And I see somebody in the spirit and they've been letting people go, but then they run back and they, and they, and they, and they act like nothing ever happened as if, oh, we, we're supposed to be connected. No. No. God has the ability to cause 
He, God says, I have the king's heart in my hands. And because God has the king's heart in his hands, he has the ability to tell the king to say no to you. Lady K, why did you say king? Not just because the I know the Bible says I have the king's heart in my hands, but Lady K, why did you choose king? Because some of us have been treating situations and people as if they are our kings. And we're trying to figure out how come we're not getting to a place that God desires for us to get to is because right now it don't make sense. Right now it doesn't make sense that Lady K is telling me that I've been treating my situation as if this person is a king to me. No, I don't. No, I don't, Lady K. No, I don't. Well, I tell you today, ask God to reveal it unto you. Don't believe me. Believe God. You don't got to listen to me. I'm just telling you what God is telling me to tell you. But can I also say that if you don't believe it, that could be your hindrance. A lot of us don't even realize that the hindrances, the hindrances that are in our lives is because we don't want to believe it when God sends True people of God. We so busy. Prophesy to me. Prophesy to me. Tell me when that next car is coming. Tell me when the next house is coming. Prophesy to me and tell me I'm about to get all this money. Prophesy to me and tell me I'm about to get this husband. Prophesy to me and tell me I'm about to get this wife. Prophesy to me all of this good stuff. But when you begin to prophesy to me that God is saying, cut people off. Oh no, I don't want that prophecy. I want all that other stuff. I want the stuff that's going to pat my back and make me feel good. No. God said it's time out for all of that. I'm awakening my prophets that ain't out here prophesying what you want to hear. I'm awakening my prophets that's going to give you what you need. The tools and the keys to set you free. It says that the captives shall be set free. A lot of us aren't free because we enjoy the sympathy of others seeing our pain. A lot of us aren't free because we enjoy the fact of people confronting us and saying, "Oh, I see I see you I see you in pain. I see you hurt. Let let me let me let me get oh, let me go get this band-aid." Let me go get this peroxide. Let me go get this. Let me go get this to help you. Let me go. But can I tell you a womb that is covered does not heal. Some people ain't going to want to hear this kind of word. And it's okay with me. I'm here to give you what God said to give you. I would have typed something. I would have I typed my tip Tuesday and kept it moving. But I got to go. I got to be. Obedient to God, not obedient to man. But you've been covering these wounds. The other day, me and my husband, we were talking. And I said, the problem with a lot of people that's been raped before, they not healed from being raped. Because they don't even want to admit that they were raped. And what happens is, is they've been raped. And they want to just pretend as if it never happened. And they just want to cover it up. And they just want to, they just want to act like nothing ever happened. 
But really, the situation at hand is, unless you accept it and understand that it happened to you and it's not who you are and it happened to you but it's not continuing to happen and that God kept you, you'll never get your healing. You can't heal from something that you don't want to accept. If you are someone who are a divorcee and you pretending like you ain't never been divorced, baby, you won't be healed. If you are somebody who had an abortion and you feel bad that you had an abortion and you want to act like it never happened, you won't get healed. Healing comes with acceptance. Healing comes when you understand that this happened to me, but it's not who I am. That's how healing happens. So if you have people that surrounded by you or around you and they not telling you You are leaving your house every day and you stink. You got a stench like you ain't been taking no baths. I'm trying to look down because I, I, I sometimes, okay, all right, God, God just told me to hush with that. But you leaving the house and you got a stench. And you just going out with your friends and you don't dress your stench up. And you look cute. Some of y'all look handsome because some of y'all men. You got on some brand new kicks. You got a nice outfit on. Hair done, nails done, everything big as the song say. But you stink. And everybody around you ain't saying nothing. Those are not the people that you need in your life. You need people in your life that's going to say, hey, listen, you look really nice. But I don't want you to dress the stench up. Let's clean it up. Let's not band-aid a wound. Let's wipe it off with alcohol and it is going to burn. But it's going to kill all the germs that's connected to it. Some of y'all need some germs to be killed that has been connected to you. And you need to understand that because we don't know what we ought to pray for. Jesus is going to do and say exactly what needs to be done and said. God will send you a viewpoint or a sign that would explain something that didn't make sense before. If you're trying to figure it out, I encourage you, read Romans 8 and 26 and let God do what he said he was gonna do because God don't need your help. You need it. All he need is for you to say yes. But let me tell you one little quick tip before I let you go. 
when I'm flat ironing my daughter hair, she always hates the part when I get closer to her edges and she always jumps. And I always tell her, Diani, that's how you get burned. Just keep still, close your eyes, and act like it's not even happening. Don't get hurt or allow yourself to be in a position to be hurt because you want to pull away as the operation is going. Allow God to do whatever it is he needs to do all in the creases uh, crevices and, and creases and crevices. Allow God to do whatever it is that he needs to do. And allow yourself to understand and realize that the way God works is not what you think. And the way the doctor operates, the doctor is the one with the credentials. He knows what tools to use. He knows how to lay you on the bed and put you under anesthesia and get it done. Some of you guys know that you need the surgery, but you don't even want to lay on the surgical bed. Because in your mind, you think you're not going to get any anesthesia. Can I tell you, you are? God's going to give you exactly what you need. You're going to feel some of the pain. Because when you have a surgery, when you wake up, baby, they got to give you some more meds. Hey. They got to give you some more meds to help assist the pain. But the results... God, I thank you. But the results, the results that will, mm, the results that will come out of you just going through the surgery is well worth you dealing with the lip. Well worth you dealing then to deal with everything that comes along with the whole point on why you gotta get the surgery. Y'all, I'm tearing up because, Deani, come here. Can you look in this drawer and give me my rag? I'm tearing up because I'm grateful for my surgery. In that bottom drawer, bottom. I'm grateful that God seen fit to take me through the surgery to get my healing. And 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 let me tell you. The thing is is sometimes it's not a one surgery thing. Sometimes there's a process of surgeries. And that's okay. Just get the surgery. Just get the surgery. I heard God say, some of y'all are scared to get the surgery because you don't know if you're going to come back alive. Yes, you are. You're going into the surgery room with the protector. You're going into the surgery room with a doctor that is well qualified. You're going into the surgery room with somebody that you can't even count on one hand how many people he failed or lost. He's a doctor that don't lose. He's a, a doctor that is so well at what they do. What he does is that some of y'all don't even realize, I just came out of surgery. He's one of those doctors where he ain't going to. He ain't going to tell your business about what surgery you had, what was your issue before you got your surgery. He don't do none of that. He don't do none of that. 
He gets it done. He gets it done. And he allows you to come out. And he puts you in a place where you can recover. My God, he puts you in a place where you can recover. Some of y'all are in your recovery right now. Good morning. Some of you are in your recovery right now and God has you all restored look at that restoration God has you all restored and he has some amazing nurses taking care of you those nurses are those people that are connected to you that know what you've been through that have seen and wait outside the surgery room for you come out. That have prayed alongside of you while you was in that pain. That called or reached out and checked on you. Those are the people that God has assigned to you. So when you think about the loss or the repositioning, I want you to understand it's because of what you're gaining along the way. You have what you need. You have what you need. I'm going to read my scripture one more time. And then I'm going to let y'all go. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless moments. I love you guys.